Hey friends, it's time for another Sunday School with Miss Vicki. We are still talking about Joseph. Remember Joseph lived in the Old Testament. His story takes place in the book of Genesis, which is the very first book of the Bible. In our last lesson, Joseph started the time in prison and ended the day by uh, being in charge of all of Egypt. Remember he interpreted a dream? There were going to be seven years of lots of food, plenty of food, and then there were going to be seven years of famine. And he suggested to Pharaoh that Pharaoh appoint someone to keep track of food and to put it in storehouses. Who got appointed for that? Joseph did. Oh, this is Joseph. He looks a lot like Pharaoh, doesn't he? Remember in our last lesson at the end, um, Pharaoh gave Joseph an Egyptian name. Pharaoh gave Joseph an Egyptian wife. Pharaoh gave Joseph uh, Egyptian, Egyptian jewelry and made him in charge of Egypt. So Joseph's going to look a lot more Egyptian than he did at the beginning of the story. So there's been seven years of plenty. Joseph's been doing an awesome job. He's been getting a lot of food in the storehouses. So when the time of famine comes, people can come and buy food and no one's going to um, have to go hungry. But the surrounding countries didn't know to plan for a famine. So people who lived in other parts of the, the world at that time needed to go to Egypt to get some food, especially if you lived in the land of Canaan where Joseph's brothers live. Jacob, Joseph's dad, sent the brothers to Egypt to get some food. So let's find out what happens. We're gonna look at um, Genesis 42 and we're gonna start at verse three. So Joseph's 10 older brothers went down to Egypt to buy grain, but Jacob wouldn't let Joseph's younger brother, Benjamin, go with them for fear some harm might come to him. So Jacob's sons arrived in Egypt along with the others to buy food, for the famine was in Canaan as well. Since Joseph was governor of all Egypt and in charge of selling grain to all the people, it was to him that his brothers came. When they arrived, they bowed before him with their faces to the ground. Do you remember Joseph's dreams in our first lesson? He had two of them. One was about some um, grain, some wheat, bowing down to worship him. And the other was about the sun, the moon, and the stars bowing down to worship him. It's coming true. Oh, hey, let's get our brothers here. Let's put our brothers on our board. So he's got 10 brothers who traveled from Canaan to Egypt. All right, there's some more brothers, another brother, and another brother. All right. Joseph recognized his brothers instantly, but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where are you from? He demanded. From the land of Canaan, they replied. We have come to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they didn't recognize him. And he remembered the dreams he'd had about them many years before. He said to them, you are spies. You have come to see how vulnerable our land has become. No, my lord, they exclaimed. Your servants have simply come to buy food. We are brothers, members of the same family. We are honest men. We are not spies. Yes, you are, Joseph insisted. You have come to see how vulnerable our land has become. Joseph, I don't know if he's playing a practical joke or if he's giving a test to his brothers or what, but he puts them in prison. He puts them in prison for three days. And then he goes to talk to him and he says, look, I want to, I want to meet everybody in your family because I'm convinced you guys are spies. So I want you to go home and I want you to get your youngest brother and bring him here. And they're talking amongst themselves and they're not agreeing. And they're... It's a wonderful, wonderful story. You should read that part of it, uh, verses 14 um, all the way down to 23. And they didn't know that Joseph could understand their language, but Joseph could understand their language. And it's so, so cool. So Joseph is, is overwhelmed. He stops, he, he leaves, and he just weeps. He's so sad because he sees that they're uh, troubled by all of this. And it seems that they are different and they have grown and changed just like Joseph has too. So he says to him, I'm going to keep your, your brother Simeon. Simeon's going to have to stay here in prison and you guys go home and you get your brother Benjamin. All right. So the brothers go home. They open up their bags of food and there's food plus all of their money. Joseph gave them all of their money back. Well, they don't know it's Joseph and they're kind of terrified because um, we were supposed to pay for this and now it looks like we didn't pay for it and they're holding our brother Simeon. They go and they talk to dad. Dad is beside himself. 
Okay, first of all, Joseph's gone, and now Simeon's gone, and now you want to take Benjamin from me too? No, I'm not having it. And that's where we're going to end our story today. Simeon's in prison. Joseph's still in charge, but he's seen his brothers. The dream has come true that his brothers were going to bow down to him. There's a lot of weird stuff happening, and there's a lot of bad stuff happening, right? That reminds me of one of our verses from when we talked about Paul. It says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. Romans 8, 28, A. So that is from the New Testament, but that's something that we can look at and we can see it in Joseph's life and we can see it in our lives too. Sometimes really bad things happen, but it causes us to stop and to think and to listen to what God has for us. And even though there's some weird things happening here, it's going to turn out for the good and it's going to be awesome. You're going to have to find out next time. Remember that God loves you, God made you, and he has an incredible plan for your life. See you next time.